and gentlemen and welcome to the 48th annual Mid-States High School Hockey Championship Games hosted by your St. Louis Blues and the Enterprise Center. Our first game tonight is the 18th annual Wickenizer Memorial Cup game named in honor of former Blues legend number 14, Doug Wickenizer. This year's finalists are the Duchesne Pioneers and the Lafayette Lancers. The Lafayette Lancers were the third seed entering the Wickenizer Cup tournament and have gotten to the finals by defeating Fort Zuwald East in the quarterfinals and Rockwood Summit in the semifinal. Now let's meet the players and coaches of the Lafayette Lancers. Starting in goal, wearing double zero, Kelvin Rogers. Also starting tonight at defense and wearing number two, Cameron Coates. 
Wearing number four, defenseman Jacob Mattis. Number 10 for the Lancers, forward Davis Rigg. Starting at forward, wearing number 12, James Vermeesh. Also starting at forward, number 13, Patrick Johnson. Number 15, forward, Nathaniel Orff. Wearing number 23 for Lafayette defenseman, Cameron Canova. Number 28 forward, Grant Robinson. Number 29 forward, Josh Hansen. Wearing number 32 for Lafayette forward, Jack Chubb. Number 37 forward, Carson Albers. Oh, wearing number 39 forward, Sam Rubenstein. Wearing number 71 and starting on defense this evening, Chase Morgan. Number 72 is a defenseman, Jacob Rosimov. Wearing number 84, defenseman Logan Bayless. Number 87, forward Trevor Noisy. Wearing number 90, goaltender Dane Kemp. Number 91, forward Shane Robinson. And starting at forward, wearing number 92 for the Lancers, Colin Stewart. If you'll look over to the Lancers bench, we have a couple players that were scratched this evening. Let's acknowledge them. Number 27, Luke Hansen. Number 40, Max Bennett. Number 63, Tyler Wojtkoff. Number 79, Luke Carrico. Number 88, Jack Carrico. And number 89, Justin Sprague. The Lafayette Lancers head coach is Mr. Jim Carrico. His assistants are Anthony Capoletti and Jeff Hansen. The Duchesne Pioneers were the top seed entering the Wickenizer Cup Tournament and have gotten to the finals by defeating Westminster in the quarters and Parkway West in the semifinals. Well, let's meet the players and staff from Duchesne. Wearing number three forward, Jack Johnson. Starting at forward, wearing number seven, Vincent Conti. Also starting at forward, wearing number nine, Nolan Kelsey. Number 11 for the Pioneers is Kevin Burke forward. Starting on D and wearing number 13, Jackson Debo. Wearing number 15, forward Troy Hafner. Starting on D and wearing number 16, Derek Cagle. Number 19 for Duchesne, defenseman Matthew Kaufman. Starting at forward and wearing number 21, Tanner Freeman. Number 22 forward, Dominic Mattingly. Number 24 is goaltender, Kyle Spann. Number 25 for the Pioneers, forward, Trevor Bailey. 
driving in goal and wearing number 30, Jack Buster. Oh, wearing number 38, Grant Deacon. Number 43, defenseman Matthew Klotz. Number 49, goaltender Jacob Burke. Number 61, forward Austin Mears. Number 72, Purdue Shane, forward Manny Del Toro. Wearing number 77, Joe Dieters. And number 78, forward Caden Farr. The head coach of the Duchesne Pioneers is Mr. Joe Rupp. His assistants are Steve Kinnison and Tom Hafner. The officials for tonight's game, your referees will be Andy Hudson, and Rich Palo. The linesmen this evening, Chris Severe and Jason Carrera. Ladies and gentlemen, I'll ask everyone to please rise, remove your hats if you will. You're invited to sing along with our national anthem. This evening, presenting our national anthem is Staff Sergeant Charles Davidson, U.S. Army National Guard, U.S. Army, U.S. Hero. Ladies and gentlemen, our national anthem. Thank you. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we watched we're so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the whole Welcome into Enterprise Center, ladies and gentlemen, for the Mid-States Hockey Championships. First on the docket is the Wickenheiser Cup. It's the Lafayette Lancers and the Duchenne Pioneers. I'm Patrick Kelly up in the booth alongside former Blue Jamie Rivers, Andy Strickland, down between the benches. And boys, a huge game tonight as the Lancers look to get their second state title. Meanwhile, Duchenne looking for their first in their history. Yeah, this should be a great matchup. You know, Lafayette uh, had a bit of a close call in their semifinal matchup. They had to pull off a big victory in the dying minutes of the game. James Vermeers with a huge performance that night. But, you know, Duchenne uh, backed by solid goaltending, as well as Vincent Conti, who's their leading scorer, who is tearing up mid-states this year. So this should be a real interesting matchup. A couple of newcomers here in the last couple of years to the WIC final, but Andy, I think it, uh, it bode for some good competition down there. I would agree with you. Both teams want to play a high up-tempo style. They have some guys who can put the puck in the net. You look at Duchenne, they've got a goaltender, and Jack Boschard, who obviously has been tested, is one of the top goalies in the area, and the same can be said on the Lafayette side. They've got a goalie who obviously has helped get them here in Calvin Rogers. He was excellent in the playoff, leading to Lafayette, getting here to the Enterprise Center. This should be a lot of fun, fellas. And for the Pioneers to start, it's gonna be Vincent Conti next to Nolan Kelsey 
And next to them as well as Tanner Friedman. Meanwhile, for the Lancers, it'll be James Ramirez, Patrick Johnson, and Colin Stewart. As the Lancers will start with it in their own end. Defense trying to work it out the far side, backhanded up. That's going to be smacked back in by the Pioneers. Going back to grab it is Chase Morgan, one of the top players for this Lafayette team as Duchenne takes it away and taken right back by Chase Morgan. He flips it off the glass and it's going to be gloved down by Vermeersch. Vermeersch sends it in and sending that to the far side is Cagle as the Lancer is able to grab the loose puck and they go back to center. Now it's thrown in by Jacob Mattis. Coming out of his net to play it is Boschert. And a lot of the Lancers are changing, so Duchenne back in their own end working with it. That's a good first shift, guys, there by Lafayette. Patrick Johnson is a guy who sets the tone for the Lancers. He had a big hit here in the neutral zone and getting pucks in deep. You can see him skate. He'll be used an awful lot. You'll hear his name a lot through tonight's game. Yeah, Andy, I agree. Uh, Patrick Johnson and James Ramirez, both of those guys are, are teammates during the season with the AAA Blues organization and uh, line mates here, so they'll have a big impact out there for sure. And you're just barely keeping in a long shot taken by Mattis's glove by Bosher for our first stoppage of this first period. Yeah, you know what, Andy, as well here, we have to keep our eyes on Chase Morgan, uh, 71 for the Lafayette Lancers on defense. He plays, you know, minimum of half the game. So it'd be interesting to see how he manages his minutes here tonight. Yeah, and talking to the coaching staff of Lafayette prior to the game, Jamie, he said they're not concerned about matching lines. They'll roll lines, but again, Morgan, a guy who's a catalyst in the back end, like you said, he'll be out there an awful lot, and he'll certainly see a lot of Vincent Conte, I would think, as this game goes along. As Duchenne tries to clear it to Freeman on this side of the boards, but now it's thrown to the point, but they can't hold the line, so... Pioneers have to race back in their own end. Lancers pressuring. Grabbing in again is Freeman. He sends it back to his defenseman. And then thrown over to the far side point. Kept in by Morgan. A long wrist shot. Got deflected on the way through. And then thrown towards the slot. But the Pioneer is able to clear it out of the zone. You see the pressure there, Jamie. The four check by Lafayette causing a little bit of problems. And there's a turnover. And could have been a dangerous situation for Lafayette, but again, it's the pressure from the four-check Lafayette. You can see their speed here in the early going. Yeah, and also I think uh, to be mentioned is Duchenne carrying five defensemen only, and Derek Cagle, number 16 on the blue line, he'll be getting a lot of minutes here tonight, so interesting to see the pressure from Lafayette, how that affects uh, some of the Duchenne defenders out here. Duchenne wins the faceoff and immediately a shot towards the blocker of Rogers, but... Uh, Quick save and another whistle. Lancers are going to change up their forward lines. And the big guns are coming back out again. They said they want to roll the lines, but when you have some experienced players who have gotten you here, you know they're going to be out there an awful lot, and back comes the Vermeersch line. And tie up in the dot goes the way of the Lancers as Coates able to backhand that up. It goes right to the defense of the Pioneers. Loss at the red line, picked up by Vermeer. She heads into the zone and a good stick by Dival. And then a hit on the far side. Knocks that puck loose, but Duchenne's able to come back away with it. Thrown in by, by Cagle. On the far side, Lancers holding it in, trying to push it up the boards. It, it's pushed towards the slot, stick by Rogers. And it's going to be cleared out by Coates. Touch by Bosch. And as now the Pioneers try the breakout, it goes off a Deacon stick and then slap back in by Coates. Off the board, stolen once again by the Lancers. This time they'll grab possession instead. Now Vermeer sends it back behind the net. Duchenne on the near side. Able to get it to center, but taken back by Coates on the back and he's going to enter down the right wing. Has no men in front, still waits, then sent one towards the middle that goes off the side of the net. And here come the Pioneers the other way. Stopping at the blue line, able to go in cleanly, but nothing of that for the Pioneers, so the Lancers send it down and both teams will make changes. And that was a nice job by Davis Rigg. He's a big rig too, look how big he is out there. Number 10 for Lafayette, getting back, a little backside pressure and you know, obviously, uh, taking the place of a defenseman from Lafayette who got caught up ice. 
Morgan sends that hard off the end boards. Kegel back to get it, tries to work it up to his forwards, but Lancers doing a great job of keeping it in, throwing towards the middle, but no one was home for the Lancers. It goes back to the point for Morgan, and he takes a long wrist shot, touch Bosher, then the rebound was cleared to the corner. Kegel grabs it. He's carrying it forward. Could be a three on two if they hurry. Kegel loses it. It drops back to the defense, and then it's broken up. A nice play by the Lancers, but not out. Shot taken, blocked in front. Chase Morgan able to work it up, and here comes Trevor Noisy, but he had no one with him, so he'll just go off for a change. Pioneers trying to send it up the middle. Intercepted by the Lancers. And then off the boards goes right back to Duchenne. And only to be cleared in by the Pioneers. Chase Morgan, the man back, pressured by Kelsey. And then Jack Johnson able to poke that puck away. Morgan back on it. Nice reversal. And he looks forward with it. Saren pass. Able to find a man now into the zone. Shane Robertson had that bounce over his stick. And at the point, Mattis able to keep it in. Now Rubenstein going back and forth in the corner. Goes back to Rubenstein, a hard angle shot, and that goes off the side as Bosher may have got a piece. Lost in the skates of a Lancer. Shane Robinson sends it in front, and a good save by Bosher on the one-timer. Is that was Rubenstein with the shot. That's a great shift there by Lafayette's third line. A lot of pressure, great work along the walls. Uh, Duchenne effectively, though, keeping them to the outside, doing a good job of defending. Yeah, I would agree. The Robinson brothers, you can see the chemistry. So they've been doing that for a while, you would think. One's a senior, one's a freshman, and Rubenstein seems to uh, fit in with that line really nicely there for the Lancers. You know, Jamie, you look at Duchenne, they've had trouble a couple of times inside their own end, a couple of turnovers. Again, handling the pressure, they may have to make an adjustment or two here in the early going, just finding a ways to get some clean exits out of the zone. Yeah, I agree. I think the Lancers' speed is going to cause them a problem early. And once they adjust here, uh, you know, hopefully they can uh, limit some of those turnovers, Andy. Pioneers are pressuring in the Lancers' end, but they push forward, and it's a three-on-one the other way. Morgan being tied up, able to push that to the corner. Again, there first is Dybul for the Pioneers and just barely kept in by Bayless. Sent towards the middle and breaking that up is Derek Hagel, the junior, carries it past center. He enters the Lancer zone, tries to send it towards the middle. A good breakup as it went off a skate. Now off the boards and going forward into the zone. It's Johnson in front, the shot by Vermeer, and that just got deflected wide. Duchenne's going to have to be very careful as they move their defensemen up into play. Leaving guys like James Vermeer's wide open in front. Patrick for the first goal of the game. Vermeer, a huge goal. Got that feed in front and just lifted it past the glove of Bosher. And it's 1 0 for the Lancers. And that play was created off a turnover. Derek Cagle, he's been the one bright spot for Duchenne here in the early going in terms of their ability to get off ice, but he turns the puck over in the quick transition from Lafayette, and they'll make you pay in a hurry. Vermeer, he's their leading scorer here in the early going of the of the of this game, but obviously throughout the regular season in the playoffs as well. He's their go-to guy offensively, and we see why right there. Yeah, great job by Stewart down low, cutting off the wall, and then Patrick Johnson almost with a no-looker up front to James Vermeer. Once again, you can tell these two have played together before, and Vermeer makes no mistake in front of the net like that. So great first goal by the Lancers. So the freshman makes it one nothing in the Lancers pressure again cutting to the middle was noisy but he was had the puck knocked off him so here comes Duchenne the other way speeding into the zone able to get around one man and then having to pull up was Mears tried to send it towards the middle in the slot but Mears picks it up again in the high slot loses it back at the point the shot taken blocked and we're going to have our first penalty of the game, and it looks like it's going to be on Lafayette. Yeah, Austin Mears had got in there uh, buzzing around a little bit in the offensive zone, and it looked like uh, Noisy uh, tried to get a piece of him there. It looked like he got a little bit of knee on knee, 
and, and got caught for that infraction. So, Andy, it'd be interesting to see here the Duchenne power play that obviously would send her around uh, Vincent Conti. Yeah, they're going to have to get some shots and really test the Lafayette goaltender. He hasn't seen a whole lot of action, but again, the interference penalty gives Duchenne an opportunity here to get on the board and tie this game up. I think uh, we should mention here as well that the Vermeers-Johnson combo out there killing penalties, they'll look to turn offensively any chance they get as well, guys. Coates pressuring shorthanded, goes into the corner, then tries to throw it out in front, but was blocked away by Boschert. Now Cagle back in his own end, sends an ill-advised pass towards center, intercepted by Vermeesh. He moves in shorthanded on the backhand, tries to send it in front to Johnson, and it was loose briefly, but Bosher is able to find it and hold on. And it's amazing, these two guys are just freshmen. Uh, you just look at the confidence, the swagger that Johnson and Marish, that they play with, whether it's five on five or they're killing penalties. Again, they're always looking for one another, but they've got that attack mentality when they have the puck, always looking to score. Duchenne wins the draw in their own end. Clearing it in past the red line and getting their first will be Logan Bayless able to knock off the boards. And it's gonna be a two on two for the Lancers. They weave back and forth now going out to the outside. A backhand shot, good save by Boschmer on Rubenstein. Rubenstein with a nice play there, showing some speed, driving wide and again Boscher just holds his ground so steady in between the pipes. I mean, they're going to be counting on him big time. They already are here in this game, but he's going to have to be what he's been thus far here in the early going if Duchenne's going to have a chance because they're not generating a whole lot offensively right now. Another turnover goes the way of the Lancers. Loose puck right at the logo at center. And the Lancers just going to send it in. A big check and then some pushing back and forth right in front of the Pioneers bench, and it's going to be another delayed penalty on the Lancers. Yeah, this is going to be Shane Robinson. He got his hands up a little bit high there on Conti. And what happens, Jamie? The referee sees not always the first one, but they're going to see the retaliatory. And here's another opportunity for Deshen. Only five seconds left on the penalty to Noisy as the Pioneers send it behind the Lancers net. Touch to Conti, a one-timer, and that goes wide, missing everything and coming out of the net, or out of the box, rather, is Trevor Noisy. He's going to touch that, and the Pioneers head right back to the power play. Yeah, Andy, interesting choice there by Duchenne as uh, they had the opportunity to go five on three. Yep. Uh, they elected to pull the goalie out, go six on four for a while and try to capitalize. Uh, personally, I'm more of a fan of give the other team the puck and get the five on three, but hey, you know what? They had full control. I guess they make that decision. But back-to-back uh, -back power plays, this will definitely put the pressure on the Lancers. Yeah, I'm with you, and that's where you need the communication from the bench. You know, they're playing in a new building here at the Enterprise Center. Sometimes you don't always know where the score clock is versus some of the smaller rinks, but I didn't hear a whole lot of yelling from the bench telling the Duchenne player to give it to Lafayette to get that whistle and at least get a couple of seconds there with a five-on-three. You win the faceoff on a five-on-three, Jamie, as you know you can create an offensive chance pretty quickly. So what do you want to see here now? Another opportunity on the power play for Duchenne. They got to win the faceoff. What would you like to see here, Jamie? Well, you know, first of all, they have to generate some shots on net. Last power play, Lancers had three shots on net as opposed to Duchenne, I believe, that got uh, one attempt on net. So uh, they want to turn that, they want to flip the table on that for sure, generate more pucks to the net. I guarantee they're going to want to get Vincent Conti and Derek Kegel out there as soon as possible as well. Coates slaps that into the Pioneers and two successful clearing attempts so far on this penalty kill for the Lancers. Pressured back on their own end is Duchenne. Pushed forward by Patrick Johnson. He's, he's looking for Vermeersch, but Pioneer is able to get back to center and then it's going to be offsides as it was caught between somebody's feet. Yeah, it just doesn't look like the Pioneers are getting any uh, momentum here off of this. They look a, a little bit disorganized, on uh, especially their zone entries here. And, yeah. you know, the Lancers are doing a fantastic job of being disruptive all the way up the ice and all the way through the neutral zone. So uh, Pioneers got to look to get it together here a little bit, Andy. Yeah, that was Nolan Kelsey there. He didn't need to do that. He had plenty of opportunity to take the ice that was in front of him, get a couple more steps and get the puck in, try to force a play that wasn't there at the blue line, led to an offsides. 
Pioneers pin back on their own end. 60 seconds gone by in their power play. Here's Conti with a lot of speed down the left wing. He moves in and can't get a shot off. Still with a puck though. Now over to the point for Cagle. Cagle back down low and Hafner not able to hold on to that as Coates pushes that forward and then his Riggs joining in on the attack and they're able to clear it but not out. And the second attempt by Rubenstein goes all the way down. You know, Duchenne's on the power play there, and Kegel left the zone a little bit early. He may have had a chance to keep that puck in the zone. Instead, he was backing up, thinking defense. They got to start changing the mentality a little bit here. Kegel, Kegel able to push by a three on two going the other way, and a shot taken. Rogers has it. Summer, it pokes loose, but the whistle was blown. Wow, Lancers get a little bit of a break there, Andy. I'm not sure if you can see it from your angle, but from our angle here up top, that puck was loose, and the Pioneers could have had a, a goal-scoring opportunity, so referees helping out the Lancers just a little bit on that one. Yeah, I would agree. It looked like it was loose, but again, I talked about Kegel backing up. I think that's more about the threat of what Lafayette has shown when they're killing penalties, just how aggressive they are. And I think that's maybe thrown off to Shen a little bit here early. Yeah, absolutely. Face off one back to the point for Cagle on a slap shot, found its way through, but saved by Rogers. And the Lancer is able to clear it once again, and we are back at even strength as Robinson heads to the bench. Cagle, nice pass into the zone and unable to grab it was Kelsey. So the Lancers send it over to the near side as Cagle keeps it in. A long wrist shot, misses everything. Goes into the corner for the Pioneers. Nice play, trying to work it to Kelsey. Went past his stick. Now moving forward with it is Noisy. Noisy able to get around Cagle, then move towards the net. He lost that puck, regained composure in front. What well, two chances in front for the Lancers. That's clear to the corner by the Pioneers and still under some pressure now behind their own net. And is finally able to grab it is Austin Mears. Weaves past the Lancer. Now Mears into the zone. Gets his stick lifted. A good play by Rubenstein. He's the lone man heading in to the Pioneer zone. P pulls up. He waits. Perfect amount of time and a shot taken by Robinson. Misses everything on the wrist shot. Uh, tie up on the boards, Rubenstein trying to push that down, able to get it to Robinson, and the Pioneers move it up to Freeman. Met at the line. Keeping it in is the Lancers now behind the Pioneers net. It's going to go over to the far side, and the Lancers grab the loose puck, heading towards the slot, poked away, and then back to the point of one-timer by Coates. Gets deflected wide, and then another chance is going to be covered by Bosher. Couple of real good chances there from Lafayette. Putting the pressure on Duchenne, and Jack Bosher covers up there. But just a couple of minutes ago, you had Trevor Noisy with a beautiful pass. He got the puck out front. Carlson Ar uh, Albers was right there, and you know Bosher was able to make the save. And just a few seconds later, Rubenstein pulls up inside the blue line. Real smart play because Duchenne had three players back but he was able to wait for a line change and get some help offensively and led to a scoring chance there for Lafayette. Pioneers end up getting the drop. Goes back to Morgan though at the point and a hard slap shot. Misses the net. Lance is able to get the rebound though, trying to send it back to Morgan. This time intercepted by Troy Hefner. At the blue line, gets knocked off the puck for Mirsch, able to push it forward and here comes Colin Stewart, Stewart in and a wrist shot, point blank save by Bosher and it was loose briefly, but now the ref covering up and maybe a little bit of extra play behind the net. Yeah, I guess a little bit of a, of a payback there, a bit of a quick whistle on that play, unfortunately for the Lancers, but once again, guys, that Vermeers, Johnson, and Stewart line is, is wreaking havoc out here for the Pioneers. Yeah, we don't talk enough about Colin Stewart. This guy's got some silky mitts. He showed it there, some good hands, but he can also really shoot the puck. You know, his brother, Tyler Stewart, he's the emergency goaltender for the Blues. He's in the house, too, so who knows? Well, he'll, you know, if you need a goaltender, I guess you got one in the house, but... <laughs> The Stewart brother on display there. This is a powerful line, though, and they're fun to watch. Now, do you, when you talk about him, do you say he's the brother of the E-Bug? Is that how they do it now, Andy? Uh, I think so, something like that. Okay, just wanted to make sure. 
As Mattis goes cross ice with it, now down the right wing. Has men in front with one minute left. Tried to send it in front to Stewart. Now the rebound by Vermeersh. And that's a point blank backhander handled by Bosher. Well, the Pioneers are going to have to do a better job of blocking out the front of their net. They've given up three or four point blank chances. You know, last one, like Andy said, to big country, Carson Albers. And then there we had you know, Vermeersh again, that line. They've got to block out the front of the net, guys. Yeah, there's no doubt. And again, we've seen the defenseman there, number four, Jacob Mattis, a couple of times. He's got some good wheels, Jamie. His ability to gain the zone with some speed, go wide and... Again, identify the play to make in front of the net, like you said, but the speed has given Duchenne a little bit of problems. You know, Lafayette's a good skating team, and one thing you notice by watching this game already here in the first period is just how quick this game is and how the Wickenheiser Cup continues to get better and better each and every year. I mean, just a few years ago, there's no way teams that were playing in this game could hang with either of these two teams. Really impressed with the pace here in the first period. The faceoff going back to neutral ice as it went off the back of the net. Pioneers win the draw and it goes to Beagley. Took a swipe at it, missed it. Still in the Pioneers' end as Riggs goes in after it. Two men for each team fighting for it. Chase Morgan, the third man in, pokes it away. Morgan going below the net. Spins up at the corner. He's hit from behind, able to cleanly win that to his men, though. Now it goes back to Coates. Coates at the hash marks took a backhander that missed. And the Pioneers look to clear it out. Morgan holds the line once. The second time will clear it out to center ice. So the Lancers tag back up, but that will be the end of the first period of the Lancers for the one goal lead. Yeah, guys, I think uh, I, I think the story of the first period, quite honestly, for the Pioneers has been their goaltender, Jack Bosher. Uh, he's been under pressure since the initial puck drop. Lancers are out shooting the Pioneers 9-5 to five right now. And obviously on the other side of the equation, we have that top line of Johnson, Vermeersh, and Stewart, along with Morgan on the point. Uh, this to me right now, guys, is what tells the story so far. No, it really has been. And again, the lack of efficiency on the power play from Duchenne. They've had a couple of chances, some undisciplined play by Lafayette. And we saw it again there at the end of the first period as Duchenne's going to have another power play opportunity here at the beginning of the second as Chase Morgan's going to go out uh, off for roughing, I believe. I haven't seen what the call is from the official, but I believe it's going to be a rough. And again, that doesn't help Lafayette. Not only will they be shorthanded, but they're not going to have probably their best defenseman on the penalty kill in Morgan. So how they adjust, Jamie, on the power play, this is going to be critical for Duchenne if they're going to be able to generate some offense because they were able to weather the storm, like you said. Got out shot, only down one nothing after one period of play. Well, usually, you know, the guys, the power play is designed to create some momentum. Hopefully you score a goal, but if nothing else, you put pressure on the opposition and you create positive momentum for your team. Unfortunately, for the Pioneers, they've created momentum for the Lancers off this one. The Lancers have outchanced them on their penalty kill, and that's why you're seeing some of these penalties is sometimes you lose respect for the other team's power play, and you don't care about taking the penalty. And I think that's what we're seeing a little bit here is that the Lancers, as Coach Jim Carrico, I'm sure would love for them to tighten up with their discipline as far as penalties go. Uh, but right now, I don't think they fear the opposition's power play, Andy. No, and they got to create some some shots to get you know to the front of the net there for for uh, and, and really test this goaltender from Lafayette who really has had an easy you know uh, game thus far in the first period. I mean, you said he faced five shots, but really was never under any type of duress. Nothing close to what we've seen at the other end here for Duchenne. So again, this is critical, but maybe generate some plays from down low. And don't try to be too cute here because when you turn pucks over against Lafayette, like we said a couple of times here already, with as aggressive as they are on the PK, these guys are looking to go. Johnson, Robinson, and these guys, they don't care if they're shorthanded. They want to create some offense here on the PK, so we'll see how this goes here for Duchenne. It looks like they are going to be shorthanded. As Andy said, only four men out there so far for the Lancers. As nothing's been shown on the video board yet, but as of right now, it's five on four. And Morgan Chase is going to get a two-minute roughing minor as Conti throws it in. 
Goes over to this near side. Duchenne able to grab it. And they'll set up the power play. Conti back at the point. Moves it down. Mears sends it back across. Tries to send it off the boards up to Cagle, but it's intercepted by Lafayette. And that's what we're talking about right there. Just get pucks on net. Trying those seam plays and the backhand plays against this PK. Those are really difficult to make. I mean, they just got to simplify things here on the power play. Yeah, they need to make that, you know, one or two pass rule and, and generate pucks to the net and try to get a, a gritty playoff style goal here to, to get them going. Had a good dump in on the entry. Had good possession early on. Duchenne tries to send it down low, but it's intercepted by Rubenstein, and he clears that all the way down as Lance is doing a great job of not letting him get anything started offensively. Cagle okay, has to go back in his own end. Vermeer was pressuring, and now it goes to Begley. He able, able to move it up to Conti. Conti, nice move through, and the shot taken. Good save by Rogers. The rebound, and another pad save. And it's going to be cleared out by the Lancers. And that's what you're waiting for. You're waiting for Conti to come through. Here comes Ramirez. A shot and a good glove save by Boschner on the penalty kill. Yeah, you know, you talk about Vincent Conti, this guy, he, regular season at 59 points for the Pioneers. He's definitely the go-to guy, and like we saw there, gentlemen, with one little move, he's able to create a great scoring chance. Now, that being said, they have to be very careful because the Lancers, once again, have got their foot on the gas, trying to score on the penalty kill, and James Ramirez gets another quality chance on net the other way. Robinson won the draw in the offensive zone. Chase Morgan back with it, tried to clear it out. And then it goes in front, but the Pioneers can't get anything done. Held in by Dieters, and then cleared all the way down by Lafayette. Lafayette down back in his zone end was Kaufman. Tried to clear it up as we are back at even strength. Then Kaufman clears up the near side for Kelsey. Kelsey getting tied up, trying to push it away, and then goes in front, but it was poked away by Mattis. Lancers push forward. Nice play to get to Robinson. Robinson over to Rubenstein, and they try to send it back to Shane Robinson, but it bounced over his stick. Kept in by Chase Morgan. Long shot taken by Morgan, and that finds the belly of Bosher, and he'll hold on. You see Duchenne there get caught deep, three forwards deep at the in the defensive zone, and or the offensive zone, I should say, they didn't have a third man high, and it leads to a odd man attack there for Lafayette. And again, Boschert, who's starting to get into his groove now. You see how comfortable he's getting. He's been able to touch the puck, and the more shot he faces, the more confident he seems to be. But again, you got to be in a good defensive posture if you're if you're uh, Duchenne. You cannot allow Lafayette to break out of the zone and have those type of odd man rushes like we saw right there. Lancers try and clear it out of their own zone. Pioneers hold the line and keep it in. Coates grabs it behind his own net, tries to reverse it over to Vermeersch. And the Pioneers grab it, but taken right back by Vermeersch. Long lead pass, able to find Colin Stewart. Stewart tried to work through the defense. Drops back for Vermeersch in front. A great chance for Patrick Johnson. But it goes wide, and the net gets knocked off its bottle for a whistle. Well, these guys are just fun to watch. I mean, the chemistry they have, I mean, two freshmen and a senior on this line with Johnson and Vermeersch and Stewart. They all like to share the puck, too, Jamie. That's what I like. You don't see a whole lot of selfish play on this line. I mean, giving goes, and they don't care who scores. Great playmaking skills by all three. Yeah, I agree. And, you know, that makes a line twice as dangerous when they're all playing for each other. And those little give and goes, like you mentioned, Andy, uh, those are so important in today's game. And the fact that these guys can maneuver the puck like that and support each other, it ultimately leads to greater success for the line, which at the end of the day, guys, that's more success for the team. And they're, uh, they are definitely generating the lion's share of the scoring chances here so far in the game for either team. Well, this is a good move here, better move by Boscher. You think his stick was really broken or needed a breather? Which one is it? <laughs> he may have needed a little a little time out for himself <laughs> there. It worked. Face off to the left of him. One to the corner by 
the Lancers and taken right back by the Pioneers. Long pass off the boards, finds Jack Johnson, but he was well offside. Wow, that's a close one there, Andy. Now you wonder with that stick exchange for Bosher, you wonder if that's the play calling on yeah. that one because that was a set play. They won the face off, Johnson took off down the ice and they just shot it down and unfortunately he was just offside, but uh, a little bit of a greasy set play on that one. Yeah, there's no question it was a set play and a great face off win and a heads up play by Joe Dieters as Johnson blows the zone, it worked. You gotta make sure you stay on side. Pioneers able to work it out of their own end. Jack Johnson sending it deep. Back to get it is Cameron Coates. Coates, the sophomore, able to pass it up to Riggs. Big Rig heads into the zone right down the center. Passes it towards the middle, then a wrist shot taken. Riggs almost got the rebound, hits the side of the net. Now he fights for possession, able to grab it. Lancer send it in front, goes off a of body and off of Boschert. And now here come the Pioneers. Long lead pass intercepted by Coates. And the Lancers unable to get a pass over, so it goes back into the Pioneers end. At the blue line, pushed up to Conti. And here comes Vincent Conti, a long shot taken. That yeah, hit the crossbar, guys. Yeah, I was gonna say, that looked like it glanced the crossbar. That surprised the Lafayette goaltender too. He didn't pick that up at all, Jamie. Uh, you know, sometimes these seats here, it's tough to pick them up for these kids. As Robinson tries to backhand it over, cross ice, the shot taken, but uh, Headhunter goes wide, and then Shane Robinson trying to send it back in front. Rubenstein unable to get it, then it's held at the line by Bayless. Down low, they take a shot, beat Bosher at the save, and then Goes to the Pioneers, they can't clear it out. Chase Morgan at the point, steps forward, the shot blocker saved by Bosher. At the hash marks pushed out by the Pioneers, but it goes back into their end where Conti's able to send it back to his defense. As they wait, and now it looks like we're gonna have a penalty. It looks like it's gonna be on Duchenne for slashing. Yeah, and again, just like what we said earlier, and. This is what you find with youth hockey or high school hockey in this case. I mean, the officials sometimes, they'll let the first one go. But when you retaliate right in front of the official, you're gonna go in the box. And that's what we saw there. So number 19, Matthew Kaufman goes over, or goes off for slashing. And Lafayette goes back to the bench smiling a little bit, but they got an opportunity here to put another one in and build on this one nothing lead. Big chance for that power play is Vermeersh will take the draw. Able to win it back, they send it to Morgan at the point, went off his skate, and then back to the point. That is actually Patrick Johnson, but now goes to Chase Morgan, a longly pass, finds Johnson. Johnson into the zone, pulls up, and they'll set up the power play. Tries to send it over to Colin Stewart, but the Pioneers are gonna clear it all the way down the ice. Every team nowadays, Jamie, use it, utilizing that 1-3-1, one, one, four forwards and one defenseman. You see Johnson dropping back here on the left point. He's got the puck right now. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a pretty good setup. It's very effective if you've got the, uh, the staff to pull it off. Ramirez tried to go between the stick of one of the Pioneers defensemen, then lost his footing and sails into the net. It's a little tap from Bosher. We'll see if this faceoff stays in the zone. I yeah. would imagine this one comes outside. Vermeer was uh, you know, untouched as he just kind of blew a wheel and went sliding into the net on that play. That's exactly right. Good call by the officials. No harm intended. <laughs> no. <laughs> so Vermeer against Mears. Mears able to win that to his wingman. That was Dybul. He sends that into the Lancers' end. 70 seconds remain on the Lafayette power play. Taken down to his Vermeer. Looks like no call is chasing after him, grabbing the loose puck is Patrick Johnson. Johnson cuts towards the slot in a wrist shot. That was tipped as it left his stick. Goes wide and sent back in front again. But it goes wide once again. Two great chances by the Lancers. Pioneers unable to clear. Chase Morgan. Down by the red line. Waits and then trying to send it over, but Cagle able to intercept that. Clears it out, and it's gonna be a race for it. 
And they're able to get there a two on one for Duchenne. A little short handed, and they're still pressuring as the wraparound attempt gets broken up by the Lancers. And then Rogers lost his stick. He's able to hold on to it. And Chase Morgan fighting for it. Pushes it forward. Robinson. And now here comes Morgan. Morgan enters the zone. Cuts across the middle. And he's tripped up, and that's going to be another penalty on Duchenne. And we will have a nine second five on three for the Lancers. Oh, guys, this is going to put a lot of pressure here on Jack Bosher and the penalty killing unit for the Pioneers. That's uh, two consecutive penalties like that against a team that's deep like the Lancers. Uh, this is going to be problematic for the Pioneers. They're going to have to dig down deep here. They've got nine seconds to kill five on three first, and, and then I guess go to work, Andy, trying to kill off the five on four. Yeah, and some frustration here on the Duchenne bench. I mean, what an opportunity on the two on one. A slow developing two on one, but you got to create at least a shot or an offensive chance on that, and they didn't get one. And those are the opportunities. You look back over the course of the game, at the little, you know, you don't want to look back on it, but. Hey, you don't get too many two-on-ones when you're trying to kill a penalty. It's a big situation here, though. Again, like you mentioned, a few seconds left on the previous penalty. Lance is making changes. The, the Shen bench wasn't happy about a line change, but they make the change right as the whistle starts. And now Rubenstein sends it forward. Now it's a five-on-four again. Rig looked towards the middle, but goes off a body. And now Shane Robinson trying to backhand it in front. Well, holding it is Rubenstein. One time shot taken by Rig goes wide. Rig on it on the far side. Able to get around a man in the top of the circle. Goes back to Coates. And Coach trying to send it back to Rig. Good breakup by the Pioneers and pushing forward with it is Cagle. He's just going to clear it into the Lancers' end. Good play by Coates to spin off a check. Sends off the boards, looking for Rubenstein. Conti briefly intercepted that one, and then clearing attempt by Duchenne is unsuccessful as the Lancers send it deep into the Duchenne defensive end. Linesman just landed that double axle perfectly. <laughs> Very fleet of foot. <laughs> and a chance for the Pioneers was broken up as the stick was lifted, and here comes Rubenstein in. Rubenstein gets the pass over to Noisy. Noisy waiting and gives it over. It's sent in front and the shot taken, but didn't get much on it. So it goes back to the corner. Back of the point again. Chase Morgan, a long shot. Getting the rebound is Patrick Johnson. And he took a shot, but a good left pad save by Bosher. Bosher. Was it ever? I mean, it looked like Johnson had some net to shoot at. Beautiful save by Bosher. Quick left pad. Cleaned it off the boards was Derek Cagle. And it goes all the way down as the Lancer is able to grab it, but the Pioneers hold the line. Mears lost it just as we return to full strength. Five on five hockey, and here come the Lancers into the zone. Down the right wing, Bayless knocked off it briefly, picked it back up and tried to send it towards the middle, but a good stick by Cagle. He lifts that back to the logo at center. Cloaks on side play as Morgan tied up at the blue line. Able to grab the loose puck was Colin Stewart. He goes for a skate to the far side, then loses it. Here comes Austin Meir. Meir down the right wing with some speed. Cuts to the middle, and he can't get the shot off as Rogers was ready for that with the right pad. Lost in his skate of rig. Picked up by Colin Stewart. Can't get around Dieters. And it's grabbed by Orff. Nathaniel Orff into the zone, the wrist shot, and a blocker saved by Bosher. Grabbing it is Beagley. Good keeping in the zone by the Pioneers. Albers goes into the corner with it, able to poke it free, but no one was there for the Lancers in front, so it's knocked off the boards by Duchenne and all the way down for an icing. Uh, Duchenne needs a line change there, Jamie. Very tired, but back-to-back -back good shifts by Mears. He's had a couple of chances. He's had some jump for Duchenne here in the second period. Yeah, that's exactly what I was going to mention, Andy, is Mears with a good chance on net there. And uh, uh, the Lancers goalie, Calvin Rogers, who hasn't had a lot of work here so far this period, 
had to be big on that one. And that's the risk you run sometimes. When yep. you don't have a lot of action, you better make sure your goalie's sharp for those one or two chances. Yeah, sometimes you look at that box score, you see a team badly outshot. You think the goaltender had an easy night. It's not always the case. Faceoff pushed into the end boards by the Lancers, pressuring in the Pioneers' end, but they're able to grab possession on the near side, and it's going to be cleared out by Kaufman. Lancers immediately grabbing it into the zone, or skating backwards, waits, and then takes a wrist shot and an easy glove for Bosher. And it's good to see Lafayette get an opportunity. Jim Carrico, the head coach, along with Anthony Capaletti to get their fourth line out there for a shift. Offensive zone faceoff. Always think it's important in a game like this, Jamie. You want to see everybody get a chance to get out there and play. Yeah, absolutely. Faceoff won by the Lancers. They cut to the middle. A shot taken. Then the rebound and a huge save by Bosher. Kept in the zone by the Lancers. Tried to lift it over the forward of the Pioneers, but it's going to go out of play for a whistle. Well, Andy, you're just talking about rolling your four lines or getting everybody action, and it is important, and especially we look at the Robinson line here. We'll call it the Robinson brothers and Rubenstein, the Triple R line here. They've uh, they've had some great chances for the Lancers, and Jack Bosher comes up with a huge save there, but I've been really impressed with uh, every line so far for the Lancers. Yeah, there's no question. I, I said the same thing. The speed has been evident. And here comes Conti, and Conti the spin around to Kelsey, and he couldn't grab that on his stick. It was a three on one chance for the Pioneers. That's their best chance tonight. Loose in the neutral zone. Robinson chips it in. He's knocked down. And that's going to be a tripping call on the Pioneers. And they are not happy about that one. Yeah, I'd have to agree with them on that. Uh, it looked to me like the player kind of got tangled in his own feet there and, and caused his own problems. But uh, Unfortunately, Andy, another penalty, three in a row now for the Pioneers, and they lose their captain and top scorer on this one. Yeah, that's Conti who's going in the box, and you know he's a guy who's played AAA hockey in the past. He played for Car Shield. He's played for the AAA Blues as well, and he decided he didn't want to play AAA this year. He wanted to focus solely on high school and getting his team into the situation that he finds himself in right now, playing at the Enterprise Center, but they need him on the ice that's for sure. Morgan winds up for a big slap shot that hits the glass wide. Pioneers trying to clear it out. It is. And it goes to Beagley, and he's going to be able to send it down this, into the Lancers' end. And Jack Johnson's got to have a breakaway one of these times. I mean, he's had two. Almost, he was offsides a few minutes ago, and that one just jumped over his stick. Patrick Johnson with some speed into the zone, tries to send it in front. I believe that was two Vermeers, but then broken up by Jack Johnson. He's just going to clear this one all the way down. Yeah, you know, you'll notice the Lancers, and we talked about it earlier, uh, the front of the net play for them, but it looks like they're really trying to get behind the goal line and go from behind the net to in the slot play a lot. Stewart was trying to do it all himself. Was met by two Pioneers right in the slot, and an easy save for Bosher. Stewart has some good hands. We've seen it there, and, and you know we've seen it a couple of times throughout the game where he's beaten a Deshen defender in one-on-one -on -one situations, but he can really shoot the puck as well, and sometimes it's not a bad idea just to throw the puck on net and use a defenseman as a screen when you can shoot the puck and fire it the way that he can. Short-handed faceoff won by the Pioneers. They try and send it all the way down. Is racing down is Hefner, and he takes down Morgan. No call is... The loose puck's grabbed by Johnson. Johnson spins away. 53 seconds left in the penalty to Conti. The Lancers are going to have to watch out the second he comes out of the box. As now here comes Chase Morgan down the right wing. Enters his own cleanly, looks in front, a shot taken is not getting all. That was Stewart. The Pioneers grab the rebound and clear it out. Boy, oh boy, all we keep doing is talking about Jack Bosher here tonight for the Pioneers. Uh, he's really given this, this team a chance to stay in the game. And here comes Patrick Johnson. Drops it off of Vermeer. Vermeer back to Johnson. Nice spinorama, sending it back to Vermeer. She looks towards the middle, one-timer by Stewart, and a big save by Bosher. Eight seconds left in the power play as it goes to Vermeer again. Tried to reverse it to Stewart. And it's going to be backhanded out. Nice held in by Morgan. Else that was going to be a breakaway. 
We are back at even strength, and then an offside declared as Patrick Johnson touched that puck. But a great opportunity once again for the Lancers, but Bosher comes up big several times. Yeah, he's been outstanding, and uh, you know, it'll be interesting now to see what kind of gas they have in the tank, the Pioneers. Obviously, coming to the end of the second, they'll get a little bit of a breather here that'll be good for them, but you eat up a lot of uh, prime minutes from some of your best players trying to kill all those penalties. And it's amazing in the game of hockey how a goaltender can just be the giant equalizer as Bosher gloves that one as well. I mean, he just looks confident and, you know, he plays for the U16 AAA Blues, plays for Jeff Brown, former Blues defenseman, Jamie, who you know very well. And, and uh, you know, he's used to seeing good shooters and being on the ice against guys who can fire the puck. And he just looks comfortable. Yeah, he looks uh, solid as a rock in there right now, and that's good news for the Pioneers. There's another penalty. And it's going to be a tripping call, it looks like, and I'm talking back and forth, but. Oh, look at that, Andy. They're the going to get, get Hanson, too. Yeah, they didn't like the uh, the beaver tail, as we call it, the yeah. old stick tap on the ice. It, I, they're going to get him for unsportsmanlike, guys. And, uh, yeah, that's where you got to keep your act together out there. You know, keep focused in the game, and your team has another chance to want a power play. I understand the enthusiasm. Uh, but you got to be careful with that, guys. Well, and this, these are the things that drive coaches absolutely crazy. Josh Hansen goes in for Lafayette. You know, he leads Mid-States in penalty minutes, had over 100 penalty minutes on that's the a, season. <laughs> that's a busy guy for Mid-States, I'll I mean, tell you that you, much. You get over 100 penalty minutes in Mid-States high school hockey. I mean, now he had some twos and tens in there as well, but still, he, he knows how to get there. He doesn't need directions when he's going to the box. Uh, maybe he's living up to that last name, Hansen. <laughs> we'll play five on five hockey. Back to the point. The Lancers take a long shot. They score. They were having traffic. It might have been tipped by Rubenstein, but it's 2 nothing. Well, guys, there's a prime example of keeping it simple. You know, they get it back up high, take a shot on net. Uh, Sam Rubenstein, a big body in front of the net, little deflection, and, and unfortunately, Bosher on the 20th shot on goal, you know, can't can't kick that one out, but uh, as we see here on the replay, just up high, a nice little wrist shot on net, gets through, and a little tip by Rubenstein. So uh, sometimes, boy, simple is better. Yeah, it was a good idea by Cameron Coates. He wasted no time. Look how quickly he gets the shot off, just throws it on net, and again, the hands from Rubenstein may have been Robinson, but I think it was Rubenstein who got a stick on there and looked like Bosher was tracking the puck, but again, the deflection is what allowed her to get past the uh, Duchenne goaltender, but a huge goal for Lafayette. Yeah, clearly a change of direction on that one. This is still rolling as in front again is Rubenstein as he got that puck right off the face off and immediately headed into the Pioneer zone. And he is in the zone tonight. I really like the play of Cameron Coates, both with the shot there. He makes good decisions. We've seen him use his feet earlier in the game, driving wide, entering the zone, making some good plays off of it. And here's a nice little replay here of Rubenstein. And again, a nice save by Boschert, who tracks the puck with his eyes and is able to come up with a huge save. Another one for Duchenne, but Cameron Coates gets the assist on that second goal for Lafayette. Smart, smart play. Long lead pass finds Conti, and he took a wrist shot and goes off to chase Morgan. Morgan knocked him down then and, and able to lift it out of the zone. There's just one minute left in this second period. Chipped in by the Pioneers. Not far enough, though. Then they grabbed the pass, and Conti took another shot. Now a backhander in front, still with it. Spin around, wrist shot. Gets blocked by a skate and pushed out by Orff. It's a favorable matchup here for Duchenne. They've got Conti out against Lafayette's fourth line. They'd love to establish some offense here. Able to clear it in as Carson Albers. The junior goes in after his. Bosher was able to push it over. Now back in his own end is Beagley. Tries to clear it out and Coates is going to go at the blue line and clear it in. They'll go off for a change. Ten seconds off to the Pioneers back in their own end. Lose it to Stewart. Stewart tried to feed it to Johnson. And still in the zone as Johnson takes a long lead slap shot in the final seconds. But that will end the second period as the Lancers lead the Pioneers by the score of two to nothing. 
Well, I'll tell you what, guys. Uh, you know, Jack Bosher has been the story here for the Pioneers, keeping them in the game. I guarantee they're going to want to get back in that locker room. The coaches are going to want to talk to the Pioneers players and you know, certainly, I think, tighten up the front of the net in their defensive zone and then get more pucks to the net. Rodgers with eight shots on goal. He really hasn't been tested all but a couple of chances. And unfortunately, the Pioneers guys, they really haven't tested him. So they're going to have to find a way to penetrate that defense and, and get more action into the blue paint against the, the Lancers. So that's the end of two Lancers, two. The Pioneer is zero. We're going to take a short break and return with you shortly. You are watching the Wickenheiser Cup. And welcome back into the Wickenheiser Cup, ladies and gentlemen, for the third and final period as the Lancers lead the Duchenne Pioneers by the score of two to nothing after 40 minutes. And it's been all Lancers the first two periods. Yeah, they've generated a lot of offense here in the first two periods, even on their penalty kill. Uh, Jack Bosher has been the story for the Pioneers so far in this game. Um, but yeah, you know, that, that first line from the Lancers with Vermeers, Johnson, and Stewart, they've been very effective. And then we've talked about it during the first uh, two periods of play. The Robinson brothers with Sam Rubenstein have been very effective as well. So uh, a lot of uh, weapons right now for the Lancers. And uh, before we went into the break, we talked about how the Pioneers were going to have to readjust and figure out a way to get more offense to the front of the net of the Lancers and really test Calvin Rogers here. And with uh, one period left to play, they're really going to have to buckle down and make sure they, they put some pressure on this kid. Shots 21-8 in favor of the Lancers. So suffice it to say, Rogers, yeah. Having a pretty slow night so far. Not really, when those shots have been coming, not really a lot of big tests. No, they, they've been from the outside. They had one rush up the ice there where, uh, you know, the uh, the Pioneers player got right to the front of the net. I believe it was Austin Mears on that play and, and drove the net. But, you know, apart from that, Rogers ha has not been forced out of his comfort zone on any of these plays. So, uh, you know, Pioneers are really going to have to direct shots. They're really going to have to have some net crashing. Uh, at the same time, though, they're going to have to make sure they don't compromise some of their defensive play because they're only down by two goals. You don't want to be taking a, a number of un, you know, uh, unhealthy risks out here just to generate some offense. As the game gets deeper and deeper, if the score stays the same, then yes, they're going to have to probably force some plays. But for now, it's going to be about discipline and more action to the front of the net of the Lafayette Lancers goalie, Calvin Rogers. Andy, one person that's really been held back tonight for the Pioneers has been Vincent Conte. A couple of good chances, but the defense for the Lancers has just done a great job of holding him at bay. Yeah, they really have. And again, we've seen flashes of what he brings to the table with his stick handling ability, his ability to skate. But again, keeping him to the outside, not allowing him to get within striking distance of the Lafayette, Lafayette goal. I mean, he hasn't really had a whole lot of chances offensively. And again, when you try to focus on what the game plan is when you're going up against Duchenne. It centers around shutting him down. He's their leading scorer. In fact, he's the leading scorer in the history of the program, and they've done a phenomenal job of doing that here thus far. Well, Andy, I think we need to mention here before we go any further that our play-by-play -play man, Patrick Kelly, up here, grandson of legendary Hall of Famer broadcaster Dan Kelly and John Kelly, who brings us all of our Blues games. So hats off to you, young man. Welcome to the booth. <laughs> well, thank you guys very much. I'm glad to be up here with you, too. I'm in good hands, I'd like to say. <laughs> well, I don't know about that. But you guys we hope might so. disagree one by one, yeah. But <laughs> I depends how I think. Is the Lance is a hard shot from the point. Coates shoots it wide. and. Grabbing the rebound was Vermeersh. Vermeersh again. Now Patrick Johnson. Puck knocked off him and Conti. Clear and attempt fails and the second one pushed out. And then Chase Morgan able to get it to Patrick Johnson. Tried to win it to Stewart. And Conti able to clear it down into the Lancer's end. Touching it forward was Hafner, but now Colin Stewart racing for it. Cagle able to push forward and send that back into the Lafayette zone. A solid puck possession yet is Stewart tries to win it up the boards. Can't get past the defense of the Pioneers. 
And then holding it in was Kaufman. Sent it towards the net. Good save by Rogers. And Conti's going to pick up the rebound. Tries to cycle it behind the net. Where it's grabbed by Hefner. And then he's knocked off the puck. And it will head back to the point. Near side. They send it back down low. And Hefner can't get the pass off. So poking that forward was Vermeersch. Loses the puck. And then Vermeersch getting it right back. Him and Chase Morgan. Bit of miscommunication. But the pass goes clearly to Colin Stewart. Stewart, nice pass up, Robinson. Robinson can't get around Cagle as he muscles him off the puck. And then Cagle backhands it forward up to Hafner. Kept in the zone by Rubenstein. He flipped it deep. Now Cagle can't get it out, goes back to Rubenstein. Somebody lost a glove on the ice. And it goes back to center. Slapped in by Logan Bayless. Retreating to get it is Kaufman, and then Lancers steal it right back. Looking in front to Robinson, but that pass was deflected. As now Cagle moves it up the boards. Trying to push it forward. Nice job by Rubenstein to smack it right back in. Now they'll try the near side. Down the right wing, they'll just clear it all the way in. Around to the far side where Johnson can't grab a hold of it. And he pokes back out of the zone. Quick tag up. And here comes Johnson back into the zone. Took a shot that was blocked by Bayless. And then Orff grabs the loose puck and able to clear it out of the zone. Rubenstein chasing after it, unable to get there. And then grabbing it is Mattis. Mattis sends it deep off the boards. Orff backhand in front, the shot, and it just goes wide. There's a great A chance for the Lancers. Try to send it back towards the middle, but this time the Pioneers intercept that and ice it. The length of the ice. And that may have nibbled off the shaft of the stick of Boschard. I mean, he was in good position, but a prime opportunity there for Lafayette to get on the board here early in this game. You look at the replay here. I mean, some physical play there. Robinson, the Robinson line has been really visible here in the early going, but Boschard with a big save there. I think that got off the knob of his stick there, Patrick. There's a shot right off the faceoff from Riggs gets deflected wide. Chase Morgan able to hold the line, but the Pioneers deflect that pass. And then cutting towards the middle was Mears. He was knocked off the puck, kind of hooked, but no calls. The Lancers head forward, possibly a three on two instead, just clearing it all the way down and just barely missing Boschert for an icing. Well, I'll tell you what, the Pioneers line that they had on the ice right there with Austin Mears and, and Jack Johnson primarily, they've done a real good job. They had two back-to-back -back shifts with some pressure up the ice, and uh, honestly, guys, that's what's going to have to happen here for the Pioneers to get back in this game. They need more from just their top line, and, and Jack Johnson and Austin Mears look really, really good to open up this period. Both men going to be kicked from the draw, both Robinson and Mears. Face off one by the Pioneers in the slot loose goes in front and a great save rebound they score Conti He adds to his 13 playoff goals and it's two to one Wow great turn of events there for the Pioneers a good face off on that play Conti finds himself where right at the front of the net like we talked about guys we see here on the replay, just a simple play, a little bit of a botched backhand. Conti's right in the high traffic area, and unfortunately, Calvin Rogers with not a lot of action so far tonight. This one kind of goes off his pad that I'm sure he'd like to direct this maybe a little better, but Conti right there to pounce on the rebound, Andy. Well, he makes the first save, Rogers does, but again, he stays with it, and what were we just talking about with Conti? If he can get closer to the net, Maybe he'll have some more success in terms of creating some offense, and they need him to do exactly what he just did. I mean, he comes through for him like he has all season. Longley pass finds Johnson, but he was offside. Not offsides, as Conti's down on the far side corner, down in the Lancers end. Yeah, we've got some extracurricular activity going on here down in the corner. <laughs> Ramirez and Conti. Yeah, they, uh, they got uh, mixed up together after Conti's rush up the ice. And both are real feisty guys. And uh, once they got intertwined there, looked like they were playing a little home game of Twister in the corner. They couldn't get untangled. And I think the referees are both just going to throw them off here for unsportsmanlike or roughing. Nothing more, nothing less, in my opinion, guys. But uh, 
That's a big loss right now for the Pioneers, and certainly for the Lancers with Vermeers, but uh, Conti, who had coming in hot the last couple of shifts, uh, you know, they, they, I'm sure they'd rather keep him on the ice, Andy. Both of them. I mean, they want Conti on the ice for Duchenne. They want Vermeersh on the ice for Lafayette. So two of the leading scorers, two of the best players in this game now in the penalty box. The Pioneers win the draw on their own end. Pushing forward is Mears with it in the slot, tied up by Robinson, then gets a shot off from a weird angle. That goes wide, though, and I believe it went off the netting, so we will have a whistle. That goal by Conti, as I said, the 13th of this playoffs for him. He had 41 goals this season. That is just insane for mid-state hockey. Yeah, he's, uh, like Andy said, he took a break from playing AAA hockey this year and focusing on, on his grades and playing for the Pioneers. And man, what a season that is, Andy. Oh, he's had an amazing season. And, you know, you can see why. I mean, just how important he is to the success of this hockey team. This kid Mears has had a good start as well. I mean, he's got some wheels and he's had some chances too. Yeah, he's been really noticeable out there. I've really liked uh, certainly the, the start of his third period here. So it'll be interesting to see what they can develop. Johnson fighting for in the corner, tries to set it in front and then the Lancers will just give it to their goaltender, Calvin Rogers, and then some pushing back and forth as Calvin Rogers gets away from that. And referee's just gonna break him up, looks like no calls to be made. I think it was a smart play there by Rogers, the goaltender, to get in the face of his teammate there and say, hey, just calm down now. We got a 2-1 game, third period, playing for a championship. You want to make sure you stay disciplined? Don't take any unnecessary penalties and put yourself in a bad situation. Yeah, I agree, Andy, but the Pioneers doing a good job of getting to the front of the net, disrupting, causing all that action to begin with. So. Uh, both teams here are, are laying it out on the line. We got just over 10 minutes left in the third, so this is going to be exciting. Pioneers looking for a long lead pass to Hefner. Broken up by Coates and then a whistle called, and I believe it's going to be offsides on the Pioneers. Both teams make changes and Conti and Vermeer don't have too much longer on their two penalties as they were offset, so they're gonna have to wait for another whistle after this. So Lancers win that draw. Chase Morgan heads to his backhand and clears off the glass. Robinson able to poke it forward, but Cagle able to win it. He goes into the Lancers end. Cagle the long shot, pat or glove save by Rogers, and then cleared out by Rubenstein. Racing back in his own end is Joe Dieters. Loses it to Robinson, and Robinson tried to send it towards the middle. Coates trying to poke it free, but now here come the Pioneers. Almost had a two-on-one, but it bounced over Hefner's stick. And now Cagle hit against the boards. Sent to some open ice. Able to find Begley, and Begley losing that, and Lance's player gets sent down to the ice hard. And it goes back to their defense, it's Coates. Coates to Chase Morgan. Long lead pass, trying to find Robinson, intercepted. And Duchenne just clears it in far so, or cross ice. Trying to get to Rubenstein. Instead, Chase Morgan sends one in the air, able to find Rigg. Rigg has Rubenstein with him as he goes wide. Rigg behind the net. Waits, Rubenstein in front, the shot, big save by Vosher. Coates races back to get it. Loose puck in the corner. Chasing after it is Deacon. He's able to knock that free br briefly. Then it goes over to this near side for Noisy. And he loses that right back. And then Bagley gets his pocket picked. And here come the Lancers. Rig has to wait. And then that's going to be called off sides as Noisy was not anticipating him stopping on the blue line. Yeah, that last uh, chance by the Lancers, as we see the replay, Rigg passes it right out front to Rubenstein, who's had quite a few chances, had a great game, but once again, Andy, that's the front of the net that's just being left open by the Pioneers. Yeah, they need to adjust and, and be aware. It's kind of been the, uh, the theme of the game here thus far. The majority of the chances that they've received have been within five feet of the net. 
Lancer and stump it into the Duchenne end, trying to hold the line, but a nice poke check by Deacon sends that out. Lancer stay with it though, blowing a tire was Vermeers. It goes over to Colin Stewart on the near side boards. Cuts away from a man, it's a three on two. Colin Stewart has Vermeesh and Johnson. Gets around one man, then the backhander trying to find Johnson. Goes off a stick. Back to Chase Morgan, waits. Long shot, just tipped wide. Now again in front, Johnson again. Backhander to Morgan, he winds up, shoots. Glove saved by Bosher. Wow. That glove saved by Bosher. Handy, he made that look routine <laughs> on that play. And he didn't even have a goal stick on that play. And that is routine for Bosher. But, you know, that was one of the few chances, though, here in this game that he was able to see the puck. Not a whole lot of traffic in front of him. A nice shot there by Morgan, who can really fire it just from the top of the circles. But again, if Bosher can see it, he's going to make that save. Johnson kicks that face off back. It goes to Morgan, a wrist shot, and that goes wide. Kept in the zone by Mattis. Mattis down to Johnson. He's pushed up against the boards. Coming in to help is Vermeersh, but able to poke that free up to Halfman. And he enters his own, but it looks like Conti was offside. So we have a whistle. Shots 23-12 in favor of the Lancers with your 734 left. Yeah, Pioneers are, are pushing the pace here, and it's going to be interesting to see how the coaches manage it, their benches here leading down to the stretch of the third period. Obviously, the Vermeers line is going to see a lot, but I got to imagine that Vincent Conti, Austin Mears, Jack Johnson, these guys are going to get some prime ice time for the Pioneers. Nice play by Noisy to win it forward. Noisy has Riggs in. He shoots. He scores. Rig, a big goal, and it's a two-goal advantage again for the Lancers. Yeah, that's a huge goal, guys. You know, you've got your, uh, arguably, your top line on the ice, certainly your top player, Vincent Conti, and the other team comes back with, you know, a, a, what their second line of forwards and do a great job. And the big rig, as we've been talking about, guys, uh, he gets to the front of the net here. Noisy with a great little play. Little under the stick through the triangle, and Rick just one touches it in, Andy. Yeah, you got to love that. It's a beautiful play. Great pass, great feed. Right under the stick, like you mentioned. Beautiful pass. And, you know, these two guys, you know, Noisy and Rick, they've also been evident. We've talked about a number of other players on Lafayette, but these guys have been pretty consistent shift by shift in terms of their ability to get in the offensive zone. They've played some physical hockey as well and they come through big offensively. So the Lancers push back ahead again, have a little cushion as a puck in the neutralized push forward by the Lancers. They're racing after it, but Cagle's got solid possession back in his own end. Tried to backhand it to the far side. Good break up by Robinson. Robinson tried to cut it to Rubenstein, and then Rubenstein off the back of the net. Is it still loose? Backhander by Rubenstein, didn't get much on that. Goes back to Cagle, Cagle, Hit by Rubenstein as he gets that puck off, and Chase Morgan just going to clear it into the Pioneers' end. Trying to step up by Jack Johnson, able to get it into Mears. Mears cut, tries to cut towards the middle, but Morgan boxes him out. Remains with the puck. Back of the point, long shot taken, blocked in front by Chase Morgan. And now it's going to go up to Robinson, able to get around him in another two on one. Gets it in, Rubenstein tries to send it back to Robinson, but it was too far behind him. Lancer's able to get their own rebound, though, trying to send it in front to Rubenstein. That's gonna be cleared out of the zone by the Pioneers. Maybe one too many passes there, but now if you're Duchenne, you're gonna have to be aggressive. Start really pushing the pace here and trying to get a defenseman to jump in there too. Patrick Johnson trying to go through the defense and then almost fed through by Robinson. It's broken up by Duchesne, but they're unable to clear it out. Trying to get the pass over. They do in front, a great chance by Stewart, but the net was knocked off by Boschert. He was going side to side. Wow. <laughs> that's incredible, that right there. I mean, uh, wow. That's a, that's a very high caliber save by Jack Boschert on that one. Great save. Going from his right to his left, again, always in control, but the way Lafayette moves the puck, guys, it's been really impressive to see how they share the puck. Stewart, Vermeersh, 
I mean, Johnson, Johnson only a freshman. These guys are going to be good for the next couple of years for Lafayette. Lancy. Yeah, I agree, Andy. Sorry on that one, Patrick. Just uh, the, they play that small area hockey so well. That five, six, seven foot radius where they're moving the puck, jumping past the coverage. And it, we know that the Pioneers defense are getting a little tired. They, they've only got 5D that are listed on the roster. So those little plays make a big difference. Lance is cleared into the Pioneers end. Back to retrieve and then trying to break out. Good step up by Vermeer. Goes off the referee, but Vermeer stays with it. Backhands it back to the point. Sent back down by Bayless. Then joining in on the mix is Patrick Johnson. He takes the puck right away. Johnson and Vermeer fighting for it back for the Lancers. It goes to Colin Stewart, though. Now Colin Stewart leaves it for Morgan. One time shot and a blocker save by Bosher. Johnson again, this time at the hash marks. Loses, loses it in his feet, then Colin Stewart able to come away with it. And it's poked off his stick, and Conti started to have some offensive pressure, but that was poked away from him. The Pioneers able to grab it. Conti pressuring Bayless. Bayless able to get it away, and Johnson clears it all the way in, and he'll go off for a change. Trying to find Conti with a long lead pass, intercepted by Chase Morgan. Brings it back in. Sent to this near side. Morgan able to grab possession. Conti and him fighting back and forth, but the Pioneers send, go forward with it. Cameron Coates just sending it back to neutral ice with four minutes left here in this Wickenheiser Cup championship game. Goes back for Chase Morgan. Morgan trying to win it up to Orf, and now will be clipped by Albers into the zone. And now chasing after is Orf, pinned up against the boards. Orf and Chubb joining in on that. And Chubb trying to push it forward, goes to Cagle, and Cagle backhands it out, and it's gonna clear the zone, but only to be sent back in by Coates. Both teams make wholesale changes as dangerous play going right in front of Bosher at under heavy pressure. And then a saucer pass bounces off a stick and goes into the Lafayette end. Long pass finds Noisy. Noisy drops it back. Rig, he had the third goal. Rig has a lot of space in front and a good pass over, but unable to get that pass off. Then in front again and another chance in front, this time by Hansen. Rig gets it again, top of the circle. Wrist shot gets blocked by Pant. Leg and then goes in front to Rig. He takes a point blank shot that gets blocked by Bosher. And finally, the Pioneers able to, able to clear it out. Riggs sends it all the way in, tipped by Boschert. And almost kept in by Mattis. But then Jack Johnson was there to take it out. And Johnson's going to leave it for Deacon as he enters the Lancer's zone. He's knocked off the puck. Pioneers trying to find Johnson. They enter the zone cleanly, but touch forward by Mattis to his forward, Rubenstein. That's still loose in the corner. Picked up by Mears. Austin Mears goes to the slot in the one-time attempt by Deacon. Bounce off his stick, and here comes Rubenstein. Rubenstein in with Chubb. Goes over Rubenstein, the shot looking short side, but he misses everything. Less than two minutes left here is Chase Morgan on the near side boards. Able to push it in, and now the Pioneers call for an icy, and they're going to send that all the way down and get a well-needed change. Well, this is where you're going to see, guys, that the, the Pioneers are going to have to force the play. They're going to have to take those chances. And in saying that, we're going to see more opportunity for the Lancers that if they can get those outnumbered situations. And it's going to create a lot of pressure once again on Jack Bossard, who's been phenomenal for the Pioneers, but Andy, they've really got to, you know, press up the ice here. They've got to try and force something. Down by two goals, under two minutes to play. They have to create something here. Yeah, they tried to stretch the ice here. If you watch the third period, really through the neutral zone, but again, they're going to have to utilize the boards because Lafayette does such a good job of gapping up and intercepting some of those passes. Now, Duchenne's calling a timeout here, and I think that's exactly what they're saying, and I would imagine they're going to pull the goaltender 
may wait until they win the faceoff and see if they get possession. But I really like the way that Lafayette has come out and played in this period, guys, and just in terms of how they've stayed with it. And, you know, this kid, Rigg, Davis Rigg, has been arguably their most impressive player here in the third period. You talk so much about the big guns, his ability not, to not only score, but also make some plays off the pass as well. He had a beautiful pass off a of rush a few minutes ago. And, you know, he's six foot three. He doesn't have a penalty minute. I was looking at his stats. He's got zero penalty minutes on the entire season. So he stays out of the box. He's a responsible player as well. And he's had a good hockey game. Sounds yeah. like a coach's best friend, Andy. <laughs> yeah, he's been real effective for a big man. Lady, um, Lady Bing. He's <laughs> <laughs> a face-off down now in the Pioneer's end. And the referee giving both the centers a talking to. Now the face-off goes to the boards where it's grabbed by Cagle. Goes hard off the glass. He was looking for Begley, but slapped in by the Lancers. Moved up to Conte, he lost that, so he's able to get to Dieters, and now back to Conte. Conte picks up some speed into the Lancer zone, the wrist shot, and that goes wide. Now we got an empty net, back to the bench is Boscher. Long shot, and they score from the point. Cagle looks hurt, but doesn't matter, he's made it three to two. Wow, that's a uh, interesting play there. Cagle looks like he hurt his leg. Uh, fires a shot towards the net, Andy, and unfortunately, it gets a piece of Chase Morgan along the way and deflects through Calvin Rogers. So this will be interesting. Derek Cagle, uh, their number one defenseman here, looks like he's hurt, and now there's a goal behind with a, just over a minute left. This will be uh, interesting to see how it plays out. Yeah, he got his leg twisted up here, but this is what Joe Rupp, the head coach, was telling his team during the timeout. Do not hesitate to shoot. They win the board battle, which leads to the shot from up top by Cagle. A lot of speed by Stewart as he immediately heads in, and the shot hits the side. And then at Chase Morgan, a long lead, wrist shot. And that goes off, I believe, Boshard and wide. They're going to want to get Boshard off the ice here if they can. Got to get possession. Stewart sends it in front, a bouncing puck picked up by the Pioneers. And now it goes to Mears. He loses his footing. And Bosher was about to leave the net, but he retreats back into his crease. And now there's going to be an icing on the Lancers with just 45 seconds left. That's exactly what you don't want to do if you're Lafayette. I mean, they had an opportunity to at least gain the red line. Now you get a chance to rest a little bit, but more importantly, get the offensive zone faceoff for Deshen. Well, it looks like uh, Coach Jim Carrico for the Lancers is going to call a timeout here and make sure that his guys have the right energy here to face a six on five with the goalie pulled and that they all know what the plan is here. The one thing you don't want when your goalie's pulled or when the opposition's goalie's pulled rather is to be scrambly and be you know two guys covering the wrong guys and create offense for the opposition. This is a strategy where they're probably gonna wanna play the box in one, keeping everything to the outside as much as possible and count on Calvin Rogers, who you know hasn't been all that busy, Andy, but he's going to be called upon big time now. Uh, absolutely, and this is when you really feel the pressure if you're a goaltender. Up by a goal, less than a minute to go here in the third period of championship on the line. If you're Duchenne, you're going to want to get the puck on the stick of Conti. Allow him to create all the half off the half wall, and let him make the decision either to create a shot for himself or if he can open up a lane and find a teammate and make a pass. But him and Kegel, the puck's gotta be on their stick here if they're able to win the faceoff. So Mir to take the draw against Johnson. Tie up, Johnson kicks it forward, goes back to the point, hits a body in front, goes to the corner. Smack forward by Coates. And cleared by Vermeers, tried to clear it rather, kept in by Kegel. Now to the far side, Rig tipped it, high up in the air, and a big hit on Dieters as he goes down hard. Still a tie up with 27 seconds left. Able to poke it free, and it's cleared out by the Lancers. Six on five hockey is Cagle, a saucer pass forward. That's deflected, and Johnson in a race for it. Can he get there? Can he score? Yes! Patrick Johnson makes it four to two. 
Wow, good hustle there by Patrick Johnson on that one, Andy. And that's a sign right there where you can tell that Derek Cagle's played a lot of hockey tonight. Yeah. He's playing on a sore leg after that last goal. And uh, Patrick Johnson just kind of outwheels him here and puts it into the empty net, which is uh, a hardworking goal for sure by Patrick Johnson. Well, you're not going to find too many players who can skate with Patrick Johnson. I mean, he's got the wheels. He's showed the explosiveness there. And Kegel, just like we talked about on his goal just a few minutes ago, got his leg twisted up, wasn't able to find that next gear. Huge goal for Lafayette. Just five seconds left as Atlantis cleared forward into the zone. And for the second time in their history, and they go in a shot save, rebound, and that's it. The Lafayette Lancers have won the Recognizer Cup for the second time in their history. What a game. Great game. Sets the tone for a great night here at Enterprise Center. Yeah, that was uh, a real uh, nail biter there at the end, guys. You know, I uh, we talk about how well the Lancers played, and really I think the difference here was that they were able to roll three, four lines the whole game and keep that pressure on the Pioneers, and ultimately, keep pucks on that on Jack Bosher and keep him busy um, you know Dishan with a, a really great effort to make it interesting at the end there's absolutely no give up from that team at all and they should be extremely proud of, of what they've been able to accomplish here but you know hats off to the Lafayette Lancers who held it together for the entire game and, and you know worked right to the last buzzer hey guys I'm here with Jim Carrico the head coach of Lafayette, that was quite the nail biter at the end, Jim. First off, you had the timeout, one goal game. What'd you tell your team at the end? I told them we were all right. We're still working hard, and we still were playing very hard. And you know, they got a they got a good bounce on their second goal there there in the uh, in the last minute, and just making sure the boys were not panicked and still focused on what we needed to do. Patrick Johnson, Vermeesh, Stewart. I mean, these guys. You knew you would count on them. You counted on them all year offensively. How happy with you were you with their performance here tonight? They came out and then they've done what they've done all playoff long. They've worked hard. They've brought their A game every single night, and they've been a big part of our run here to the Wickenheiser Championship. What does this mean for the school? What does it mean for your program? Well, the school is fantastic. For the last couple of weeks, it's been so been exciting at the school. Everyone's walking around with uh, the Wickenheiser hoodies, and, and everyone was all in. Principals. Uh, teachers, athletic directors, was been fantastic. What about their goaltender on the other end? He made some huge saves. What were you telling your team in terms of solving uh, Mr. Boschert on the other end? We thought we were getting our chances, and if we could get traffic and keep peppering them, we thought we'd get a, uh, a goal or two. Congratulations. Thank you, sir. Thank That's uh, Jim Carrico, the head coach. Patrick, let's go back upstairs to you. And an unbelievable job by his team as they hold off the Pioneers. They win their second title. They won in 06. About seven years later, they come back. They weren't able to get the win, but they come back six years later, and they're once again the Wickenheiser Cup champions, as we are going to send it down to Bob Carroll, the PA announcer, for the awards. At this time, I'd like to introduce Diane Wickenizer, the wife of the late Doug Wickenizer, along with her daughter, Carly, who will present the Team Flex and the Wickenizer Memorial Cup. Also assisting with the presentation of awards tonight is Mid-States President, Mr. Jeff Hayes. We're going to start off our hardware presentation with the MVP award. Tonight's MVP in this Wickenizer Cup championship goes to a player from Lafayette, number 13, Patrick Johnson. Patrick had an assist and a goal in tonight's game. Your MVP, Patrick Johnson.
it's time to present the plaque to the runner-up team. I'll ask for the captains of the Duchesne Pioneers to come forward and get the plaque for this year's runners-up in the Wickenizer Cup. Let me remind our fans here that the head coach of the Pioneers is Mr. Joe Rupp, and his assistants are Steve Kinnison and Tom Haithner. Ladies and gentlemen, the Duchesne Pioneers. And now, Diane and Carly Wickenizer, along with Jeff Hayes, will present the plaque and trophy for our... All right, Patrick Wickenizer Johnson, the game's MVP. First off, take a deep breath. What was it like from your standpoint? That was a heck of a game to start things off tonight. Yeah, it was unreal. We came out flying, which is exactly what we wanted to do. Shut down their key players, got shots on net. I mean, it was a team effort tonight. You guys were able to utilize your speed, create a lot of chances offensively early in the game. Was that the plan coming in? Yes, I mean, I think everyone just had to play their role during the game, and that's what everyone did, and that's what led to our success. Tightening up defensively down the stretch. I mean, they made it close. What was talked about during the timeout in an effort to close things out? Just play defense first and don't rush offense and protect the house, and that's what we did. Getting a lot of support from the student body. Over 500 hoodies were sold. How about the support you're getting from your fans here? Unreal. It's a crazy experience having all your students at your games. It's a total different experience. Patrick, go enjoy it with your, with your uh, teammates there. Congratulations. You. That's Patrick Johnson, guys. Send it back to you. Yeah, great effort there by Patrick Johnson. Uh, phenomenal game by him and his teammates. Uh, it seems like we talked about him for the whole game, that whole line of Vermeers, Johnson, and Stewart. Uh, quite a performance. Absolutely. They were all zoned in the entire time and adding a couple goals and assists doesn't hurt as well as the Lafayette Lancers are the 2019 Mid-States Hockey Wickenheiser Cup champions. And you mentioned it as well. A tough game, but of course, Jack Bosher, the junior, played an absolutely magnificent game for the Duchesne Pioneers. Yeah, you know, he had a, a great performance. And really, you know, the whole team has to be commended for the way they played. And right to the end, they gave it everything they got. Yeah, they maybe didn't match the shots on goal. Maybe they didn't match the scoring chances. But in some of those games where you are being outchanced, it can be easy to, you know, not necessarily give up, but it, to get deflated. And they didn't. And they kept going. And that says a lot about the players. It says a lot about the coaching staff. It says a lot about the program in general and the school. So congratulations to them on a great year uh, and getting to where they are right now. And also Lafayette, you see, like Andy mentioned, the huge student body here representing uh, their team and, and cheering them on. And, and what's funny is we see we look down there and two of the young faces in the middle of that pile are uh, Johnson and Vermeersh. And uh, both freshman players, looks like they're gonna be a big part of this program for years to come. So exciting stuff. Exciting stuff is indeed as the Lancers taking their photo that will be etched in history that they will never forget as the Lancers defeat the Champagneers 4-2. We're going to take a quick break between the games, but we'll be back with the Salute Junior Billikens and the Dismet Spartans for the Challenge Cup as you're watching the Mid-States Championships. <laughs> is presented to Gerard Lamoureux from Fort Zumwalt South. Joining Gerard this evening is his dad, Gerard. Congratulations, Gerard Lamoureux, on your achievements both on the ice and in the classroom.
the Mid-States Club Hockey Association scholarship in memory of Mr. Herman Kreehauser and his fellow Hall of Fame members. Logan Oliver from Francis Howell Central is our scholarship winner. And joining Logan this evening is his mom, his dad, and his girlfriend, Alyssa. Congratulations, Logan, for being awarded this prestigious scholarship for your hockey, scholastic, and community achievements. Give it up one more time for Logan. Great spirit, sportsmanship, and respect to those within the game. At the conclusion of the season, the coaches of our organizations, along with the officials, were asked to vote for their counterparts, who they felt followed through with the aforementioned quality and were a pleasure to be around and work with. This is the third year for these honorable awards to be given. The Charlie Luzanar Coach of the Year Award goes to Mr. Mark. Fisher, head coach of the Kirkwood Pioneers Hockey Club. Mark was selected as coach of the year by a poll voted on by his peers and the officials that regularly officiate the game. Congratulations, Mark, on exemplifying great sportsmanship and leading a great example for the entire league.
Let's now please welcome Miss Susie Kitchen of the Mid-States Cheerleading Association, who will present this year's best all-around Blue Angel trophy. Wait a minute. This year's award goes to the Oakville Cheerleader Squad. Congratulations to the Oakville Tigers. giving countless hours of their time to make a difference in the lives of today's youth. Although both women passed away with lung cancer, their legacy lives on in so many ways. Both Marion and Robbie gave freely of themselves to help these girls learn life's lessons and have molded many individuals along the way. We are proud to present this year's Senior Scholarship in their memory 